Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Grand Tactician The Civil War, a new strategy and tactical Civil War game out and available on Steam. We are playing our Let's Play series as the Confederacy, and things had been going really well for us. We had taken Washington, D.C., we had taken Baltimore, the war in the East was going well, we were pushing into Kentucky, we had taken pretty much all of Missouri, but in our last uh, stream or episode or whatever, we lost a pair of battles uh, in Tennessee. We lost a battle in Western Tennessee, and we lost a battle in, uh, well, I guess they were both in Western Tennessee, one at Hopkinsville and one at Columbus, uh, so that despite suffering many fewer casualties, two cores of our army were thrown back uh, from the federal advance there and so we are pulling back troops to nashville to regroup there and hopefully push back into kentucky and then we've also moved some troops up to take st louis but it's questionable how defensible that position is after the recent defeats i think in today's episode or stream it is likely that we will be fighting a battle near Washington, D.C. Our garrison there is surrounded. We've brought additional reinforcements to bear so that we have a manpower advantage. And also a battle near Harper's Ferry where the Federals are on the offensive. I'm hopeful that we can turn things around. The Federal National Morale is actually down to 37, which I'm assuming dropped because of the casualties they suffered. Um, they had... Uh, won a couple of major victories, which presumably would have helped morale, but I suppose the casualties they lost offset any kind of morale bonus uh, from those victories. We have to get their national morale down to 25 to break it, I believe, uh, which would then result in, I think, that would result in the war ending for us. So perhaps just a couple more victories, more casualties inflicted. Uh, but today, I think we're going to start off with a battle near Washington here. It's going to be about 30,000 Confederates versus about 20, well, I guess 32,000 Federals when you include their cavalry here under Major General John Peck. We're going to go ahead and lead the assault out with our two corps of soldiers under Major General John Magruder, portions of the Army of Northern Virginia. Uh, his core 15,000 is surrounded, and then we have another 15,000 under Longstreet, which have come to his aid. So we'll go ahead and launch the assault and get the battle going. Okay, so we are into the deployment phase here. Let's take a look at when our troops will arrive. We've got the second core already on the map and then the third core, which will be arriving in one hour. Um, the second core, I believe, is Magruder's core. Uh, we are in a meeting engagement, um, which is interesting considering we're the besieged party, but whatever. Um, let's, where is, where, where is my general? Um, Get rid of this. All right. So it looks like we have... So that's 13,000. But I thought it said we had more than that. Maybe that's the uh, if everybody's healthy figure. Uh, meeting engagement with the objective being up here. Not sure where the Federals... Federals might be coming on the map over to the east. Not sure where our reinforcements will show up either. But there's a nice ridge line here to the left of the uh, river. What map is this anyway? I don't recognize this. I wonder if this is just a generic map. All right. So let's go ahead and, I guess, deploy our troops up at the northern edge of this map. We'll go ahead and hit play because we're going to be on the move. We're not going to just sit there. And then we'll go ahead and issue orders for our troops to move on to these ridges here near the objective and uh, get moving along that roadway. I think we have three divisions. Hill, Frost, and Jones. Put Hill and Frost out front with Jones in reserve. And then we'll just accelerate. And we've got this major roadway here that we should be able to follow and get our soldiers into position here. Now, it's going to be a bit of a traffic jam as we try and get those units into position. Looks like the artillery is moving first. Uh, Jones's division appears to be moving next. 
And the bulk of Frost Division is just sitting there. Probably because they got the orders to switch to a double line. Hey, absolutely. Yeah. We are continuing our Let's Play series of this game, hopefully in through to victory. I guess we'll see. Hey, New Hauser, how are you doing tonight? Okay. Hill's just sitting there, too. I should have issued the orders, let them move, and then issued the orders to change formation because it seems like the formation change actually causes them to freeze. You're throwing bales under sodium lights. I would be lying if I said that sounded fun. All right, so we are moving up to uh, the defenses here. It looks like some federal cavalry may be moving to try and seize the objective. Again, it is a meeting engagement, so it's not surprising that the cavalry would be coming coming out toward the objective here. Uh, they would also be faster, presumably, so um, that makes some sense. So we've got Winder's Brigade, which will move out ahead of the objective. We did take the objective. Garnett and Lawton are on the uh, northern slopes. Let's actually just pull back here behind this fence line. We've got a second brigade of cavalry coming up. I think they've got like 7,000 cavalry-ish. But if we hit their two lead cavalry units, then we might be okay. Some of our... Oh, shit. Garnett's wounded? I thought the game automatically... Based on what I saw last episode, I thought the game replaced wounded officers automatically. At least it seemed like they did, but maybe I was wrong. I know we've got about 2,300 cavalry in that first... For the first first U.S. cavalry, 2,100 in the second... First U.S. Cavalry. God, I wish the naming was better. They need to fix that. All right, so Hills Division. Oh, just keep moving, boys. Okay. I'd like to get my troops into long-range firing. It'll also be interesting to see if the enemy comes at us the way they did the other night when we were playing and goes with sort of their human wave assault tactics. Seems like they're content to wait for the moment, at least for that second brigade of cavalry to come up. So we'll go ahead and speed things along as our troops continue marching north, trying to get into position. All right, a third cavalry brigade is coming. Actually, now there's four cavalry brigades that we've spotted here. All right, we'll put that division in a better formation here. Wait. No, I didn't want to do that. Halt the brigade. Okay. 
hill is here. So hill's in double line, which is good. And we'll put him here. Why is this brigade facing that direction? Frost is up here along this fence line. So we want to make sure that he forms up here along the fences. And then Jones will deploy in reserve here. I'll just keep moving up. Okay, we should outnumber the Federal Cavalry two to one. No indication. Oh, shit. Here we go. Our second corps under Longstreet is on the field. I think it's Longstreet. There he is. All right, let's bring Longstreet across the river here. How are they going to get there? They're going to have to march right through the federal lines. All right, well, let's just deploy the corps here, then maybe we'll be on their flank. The problem is these two corps are isolated now. And the artillery division will deploy here. Are they going to move forward on us or are they just going to sit there? Let's fast forward a little bit. Everything is chaos and disorder. Trying to get into position. It looks like Hill's division is. Frost division doesn't look like it's in good position. Maybe they're going to try and flank me. They moved two brigades to the south, so we'll shift one of Hill's brigades that direction. Frost is finally moving his troops. Okay. So we have a two division front in double line with one division in reserve. I think. Okay. And then Long Street is moving. All right, Prentice is advancing his cavalry. Looks like their morale is already low, so they may not last long in combat versus infantry, but the battle is joined. I don't know why these guys are getting themselves flanked. Like, what are you guys doing here? So the enemy's dismounting. Firing back. Why are we at a minor defeat here? That's strange. First cab isn't going to last long out there against multiple brigades, no matter how disheveled my organization is. Enemy infantry is coming across. Prentice is already broken. Barely lost any men. Okay. What are you doing here? There you go. Single line. Exactly there. That's how I want you set up. So move Frost Division into position here. And 
Let's shift Hill's division a little bit more to refuse the flank. Slacks, artillery. Let's put a battery on the southern hill. Put a battery in the center. Enemy infantry is moving forward. It'd be nice if Frost got into position a little bit more, a little bit quicker. Longstreet is moving down a pretty good pace. He may be able to move in behind the Federals, although I don't know if that would be in time to matter. Enemies trying to maybe flank me, moving their infantry south. Frost is still not getting his troops into position as I had hoped. Taking their dear sweet time. Let's see if the Federals give them the time they need. It does look like they will. Okay. Federal morale on a lot of these brigades is very poor. But again, the assault looks like it's going to be mounted by, maybe not assault, maybe it's just a probe by a lone Federal Brigade coming at Frost troops who are behind those fences. All well, the Federals come through these uh, cornfields. Or wheat fields. Hey, SEO. How you doing? Yeah, no Star Destroyers. Wrong game. Give him the cold steel, Robert Garnett's brigade. Even though your leader is wounded. Jubal Early's firing also. Looks like their infantry in the south might also be advancing. Meanwhile, Longstreet. It's on Cooper's brigade to block the rear bridge. And then there's no real good crossing for them until way south, so why don't we move the whole core that way? We've got a whole core coming down almost behind federal lines. God's will. All right. So two brigades versus one. First Federal Brigade is losing quite a few casualties here. Our troops are losing quite a bit less. They've got about 1,500 muskets. We only have 650 in Garnett's brigade. Lawton on the enemy artillery to try and knock them out of there. They're also advancing further south now, so this has become a what appears to be a more generalized assault. Not the entire force, but at least a full division between the 1st Cavalry, the 1st Brigade, and the other 1st Brigade. Other Brigade over here. The 2nd Brigade is also moving. The weak point is likely Garnett's, so we're actually going to advance Reynolds, Alexander Reynolds, 2,600 men. Behind him. I don't want to be locked to the fence, guys. Just get in a freaking line. As a reserve. So Lee's brigade is in the open, and this Federal Cavalry unit is charging. Are we going to break through? Like, my morale on that unit's pretty low. Let's move Edward Johnson's brigade forward. They did break us. These brigade lost 32 men and broke.
Meanwhile, Winder's brigade is getting hit in the flank as they try and hit the first Federal cavalry in the flank also. This is now exposing Garnett to being flanked. We're going to give him Iron Discipline, which is like the main perk I use for all my units. And the first is giving us its flank and losing a lot of men in the process. So we're firing on the first battery of artillery, inflicting a fair number of casualties on them, forcing them back. And now we've got three brigades dealing with this first federal brigade. They won't survive long. But our own unit is getting hit in the flank as well, so we're gonna go ahead and bring Reynolds' troops up here to this cavalry in the flank. And then Winder's brigade is also in the in the fray. You know, Longstreet's boys still marching up. Still haven't uh, made contact with the enemy. So Lee is routing. They're bringing at least one more cavalry brigade up to support. The first brigade that started the assault has lost about 50% casualties and appears to be routing. The artillery battery also routed. Now we've got the second brigade coming up here in an exposed position. And then we routed the first cavalry. We're also going to bring Wegman's troops forward. Oh, they're going to be exposed to federal troops moving from the south, so maybe... Well, they can always pivot. them up, bring Reynolds' brigade forward. One of our artillery batteries just got routed. We've at least got a flanking, sort of a without flank their advance in the north. First Virginia under Alexander Lawton and Jubal Early's troops are doing, doing a good work of anchoring that flank. Yeah, Plowboy, I agree that it can be frustrating when you lose units to seemingly insignificant enemy formations. On the flip side, like, that did happen. Units sometimes broke for reasons that would cause generals to pull their hair out, so. I think the left flank, or the northern section here, is fairly safe. They got 2,200 men coming in, but can't imagine with 1,600 muskets pouring into their flank there that that's going to be something that's super sustainable. We also have Reynolds Brigade to support them. Where I'm, I'm nervous is the 1st North Carolina here, Winders Brigade, and then after that, Weg, Wegmans, Waitmans Brigade down here. Looks like there's two federal brigades massing on my flank down there. I do have some artillery in position to support, but that's some pretty close in fighting here. So we're going to move one of our additional reserve units, the 3rd CS regulars under Edward Johnson, south to support Reynolds's flank. goes the 3rd Virginia under Garnett. They broke. They lost about 50% casualties. I can't get too upset at them. Two more brigades coming in here now on the flank of the 1st Virginia. Lawton's position went from very good to very tenuous. Cooper's division is finally coming up here, so now we're going to advance these guys into the federal rear. I don't want to double-quick them because they need to arrive with energy to fight, but... Longstreet may not arrive in time for a decisive effort. I don't know how long we'll hold out here. The artillery's holding the 2nd Brigade off here momentarily. There goes Winder's Brigade also. Let's actually pull Wegman back have him fall back to this position so we can kind of refuse our line. That 
was our last reserve. And let's see if we can fall Lawton back before the enemy gets uh, too much in their face, I guess. I, I worry he's already too close and those volleys are going to tear him to shreds. This is where, right now, our elements on the line are outnumbered like two to one. And so this is a, this is where needing that second core to be in place at the start of the battle is pretty big. Prentice's cavalry here didn't lose too badly. So Longstreet is now in action. At least with one division. They should be able to push their way across the bridge. Davidson, I'm going to deploy across the bridge further north on the federal flank. And then Cooper will come in here. So we did actually route the second brigade here. I'm guessing the, the artillery must have hit him with some canister. Although the artillery itself was broken. Wigman has pulled back into a new position. Hill's division in the south is not doing so so hot. But we've at least temporarily thrown back their assault there. Lawton's not going to be able to pull back into his new position before he breaks. Early is okay for the moment. Take a look at casualties. The Federals lost about 12% or 12 of their force so far. We've lost about 7%. So in terms of loss percentages, we're definitely doing better. Cooper's brigade over that Ford or division. Into the enemy rear. So it seems like the steam has maybe gone out of their attack, at least initially. goes Lawton's Brigade. Also suffered about 50% casualties. Uh, SEO, I don't know. I haven't gotten far enough into the game to really know how the, how the game treats late war union economy. I do know that my economy is getting more brittle by the day, so it seems plausible. Advance in the south. More brigades are deploying now. Oop, Cooper's coming up slowly. Is it 1300 hours? Or 
Burley's boys firing behind good cover. Okay. I might get overwhelmed before Longstreet can get into action. Get up there, boys. To your posts. Let no man forget. Something, something, Virginia. Do Gatling guns in the game? I don't know, Cyan. I haven't looked at the late war tech. Three fifty versus one seventy. Early boys are holding fine. Third CS is driving back. First brigade there. guys look like they're routing off the field to the north. Okay if they're routing. Cross the river boys. Get going. Militia based on their brown uniforms. There's a wave assault going on against Early up here. That's not a technical term, by the way. A wave assault! Early's starting to run low on ammo, too. Early might need to be a division commander after today. Look at his experience level. He's an old hand as a brigade officer. Five stars of experience. He's probably earned it. Okay, Cyan, we're going with some Rohan talk now, huh? Alright. Old Pete, get your goddamn divisions into, into action here. On the double now, boys. Okay. Looking at a minor victory. The casualties are ticking up into the danger zone, but I don't think we're going to do it with just these two brigades. Really doesn't have enough men. These guys are disrupted. Well rested. Charge with McCullough. Drive that enemy brigade back. That's a steep hill. They'll be going up. Have at them, boys. Longstreet's going to arrive and it's going to be too late. There goes Reynolds. He's being driven back. Early's boys are still holding on. Good CS advance to hit those enemy in the rear that are trying to stop Longstreet's lead elements. Got like five brigades up here in the north. Tr 
troops laying down fire, I believe, at a much lower rate. So, like, yes, it's a good if you're not engaged and you're under artillery bombardment, laying down can be effective. Less so when you're heavily engaged with enemy infantry firing at you. Nice. So the 3rd CS came up here and fired a volley right into the rear of the 2nd Brigade. Looks like they basically insta-broke. Early's boys, meanwhile, running low on ammo. I'm gonna shift Johnson's troops north. They're not gonna arrive in time to save Early, but... He did his job. Mm. Any of these troops rallying? Like it. Yep, I'm well aware that Early's losing men. He's an elite unit, too. It's too bad. Right. Advanced the federal rear. Took a moment to pause. The flankers become the flanked. These troops are firing at the enemy artillery. And doing a good job of wrecking them. So the other one of Longstreet's other divisions is coming across here. Smith's division, meanwhile, is going to cross. Looks like we should be at a victory soon. I think early just broke. But the enemy's lost 21% of their force. The only brigade is, is Waitman's brigade in the south is still engaged with the Indiana brigade. Magruder's corps has lost more than a third of their total force, so bad day to be in Magruder's command. Meanwhile, Walker's brigade is moving forward here. Federals are going to lose a lot of guns. are slow. I don't know if Smith did this or if they were already routed. The fact that we still hold the objective is pretty impressive. We're still getting victory points for holding that. And the Federals are no longer moving toward the objective. They're moving toward our freshly crossed troops. So we should win here momentarily. Third CS is losing men. I mean, how many? Seem like they're doing okay here. We're almost to 24% casualties inflicted on the enemy, which will switch things over to a major victory for us, which will be nice considering we just lost a major defeat in Kentucky. And the enemy appears to already be withdrawing, as best I can tell. seem to be shifting their troops north. Okay. Okay. 
Katni's brigade has arrived. Should be on the firing line here in just a second. Four point one. Still only a minor victory. More than twenty four percent. Well, we should be at that right about now, but I'm guessing that'll tick up further with the next few moments. There you go, though. It's a victory. Interesting, Toa. I don't think Texas was ever in shape to make a transatlantic voyage. That was probably more of a you know, gesture than than anything likely to really transpire. But that's interesting. I don't know if it's fake. SEO so much as it sounds like it was just probably, you know, a token gesture. Oh, we'll do this for you with knowing it'll ever happen. But it, it could be fake too. All right, the enemy withdrew through our lines. Because this game has lightened up on the ability to completely stack wipe entire armies. You know, there goes the second brigade. We're just going to speed things along here, guys. I don't see any reason to belabor the battle. Okay. I mean, our troops suffered pretty heavily, especially Magruder's command. But major victory nonetheless. Better than 5,000 friendly casualties, 13,000 federal. Over 30% of their force lost. That was a that must have been a bunch of surrendered troops near the end there because we went from like 24 to 35 in like a minute. Okay, so 4,900 infantry casualties. Major General Longstreet's the commander of the force, so good on his rep. We did lose 33 guns, which were fighting in defense, mostly on Magruder's front. 5,194 casualties out of a force of 31,715. Of that, though, the vast majority were of about 13,000 combatants. The 18,000 of Longstreet's arrived late. 11,000 Union infantry casualties under Major General John Peck. 1,500 cavalry for a total of 13,000 out of a force of 35,000. Pretty crippling losses for those two Federal Corps. In, or maybe one federal corps engaged at DC and that should lift the siege of DC and keep uh, it firmly in our grasp a major confederate victory enemy national morale drops by 1.3% and we eke toward victory ultimate victory for Assad hey Manolith how you doing the battle of aqueduct bridge November 3rd, 1862, a major victory for the Confederacy. Well, that's good. Beats the alternative, right? Okay. Sort of, Toa. Texas is in rough shape. They probably got to get it out of the water. It's certainly out of sea salt water. All right, Army of the Potomac fleeing in panic. Let's read the uh, officer loss report. Richard Garnett was wounded. Okay, the Battle of Washington has ended with the Army of the Potomac retreating in panic. My command has earned us a total victory with the enemy army running for their lives. The enemy has reportedly suffered a total of 12,718 casualties, 1,132 killed, only 716 captured. That seems light. 
We only lost about 400 fewer permanent losses if you consider our 775 missing and 730 killed. We captured 8,400 rifles, 26 guns, and 683 men are sent to prison camps, which are already badly overcrowded. Oof, we've got 41,000 prisoners at the moment. Enemy morale is down to 35. Silas of the Lambs, thank you for the follow. Swede, thank you for the follow also. All right, so that should lift the siege here at Washington. And then we've also got a battle to fight out here in the valley. Uh, the Battle of Winchester. Fourth Corps, 18,000 men. I think we've got about 16,000. We've moved that way. Okay. Union issues war bonds. So they withdraw north. Meanwhile, we need another battle to fight in uh, at Harper's Ferry. Before we do that, though, let's take a look at our officer situation here. So Garnett is... Well, it says he's not wounded anymore. So he must not have been wounded badly. I guess. Um, Colonel Waddle, Cummings, Stevenson, Vesker, Hampton. All right, let's take a look at some of these brigades. 1,800 men, 600. So Cummings' brigade only has 600 men left. We should consolidate that. Stevenson's brigade is the most logical in the division, so we'll do that. Oh, Hampton and Weisker. Let's consolidate Weisker into another unit. It's going to have to be in a different division. Consolidate him with Money or Pierce. Oh, we're going to consolidate these two. So that leaves me no one to send Weisker to. Claiborne and Manny. Winder only has 900 men. Lee only has 600, so we'll consolidate them. Rob oh, that's Robert Garnett. So two different Garnets. Well, Garnett's brigade is going to consolidate into Wegman. That'll get the wounded officer off the rolls. Early should probably be promoted. His fame is not very good, and he's considered defamed, which is interesting, but his initiative, leadership, and administration are all absurdly good. So screw what the press says. We are going to promote this guy. Brigadier General. Then give all his troops to Lawton. And then as a Brigadier General, we'll probably put him in command of a division somewhere. We're also going to need to uh, raise some new troops with all these casualties we've taken. Longstreet's Corps is in better shape. Magruder's Corps really got shot up there. So Garnett's division is a is a brigade shy. We'll raise some Georgians. For it. It'll go to Winder. We've got some Springfield rifled muskets, presumably that we captured. Hood's division will also get a new brigade of troops. They're a Texas division, so we're going to keep the whole force Texan. Early will get command of that, although we may move early in a moment. Hill also needs a new brigade. New Mexico Territory. Some of these troops are going to take a while to show up. Like 49 days for... Pierce's Brigade. Then we need two new brigades under Frost's division. We 
we will do some Alabama boys. I don't even know that we've raised many troops from Alabama yet. Okay, we've got to give them new weapons too, which will be Lorenz rifles. We're really leaning hard into those Lorenz stocks for the moment. Okay, so that should re-equip everybody with fresh troops. It will take a while for those five new brigades we just raised. 18 days, 28 days, 30 days, 49 days, and 42 days for all of those troops to show up. But it will raise the strength of the army once everybody is back to 62,000, I believe. I think 6,300 are wounded. That'll give us another six. So that'll be about 62 once all those troops are back. Hey, thanks, Hell. All right, so DC is safe. Magruder's Court has 10,000 or is, is about to double in strength once those reserves arrive. To that end, however, we should probably push Long Street. I'm kind of tempted to drive on Philadelphia. But let's see what happens at Harper's Ferry first. I guess we could try and get Long Street there. Is his readiness good enough? Meanwhile, in the west, we're trying to get some of these troops back to Nashville. Pemberton's core is a new core that's being raised. Okay. Okay. Why do they have... They don't have troops that far in the valley. I don't know. The Northern AI hasn't made any a naval landings yet. I don't know if they will or not. Let's see if Longstreet will come to... Harper's Ferry's aid. We'll have to give it a couple of days. Who's starving? Right wing and Fort Hill House. Okay. All right. So it looks like some weapons have been delivered. We're trying to get those troops to Harper's Ferry before things collapse. It's taking them a good number of days. Letters of Mark privateering made legal in the South. So that policy is done. Let's go ahead and pick a new one. I'm tempted to do support Mexican intervention that will make the union morale higher. It will also reduce the number of new recruits in Texas. The main benefit is it makes Europe like you more, 15%. But we just made Europe like us less with the uh, letters of mark policy. Alternatively, we could go with the Revenue Act 3, which opens up more economic options, which well, I guess we'll do that. Okay, not that I've seen Tusked. All right, what's the situation at Harper's Ferry now? We've taken 500 casualties. Nathan Ban Nathan Nathaniel Banks is a little bit more infantry than us. So I guess I'll wait for Longstreet to show up. Which should be in a day or so. All right, so Longstreet's here. That now gives us a two to one advantage, roughly, in manpower. Oh shit, our readiness is too low to launch an assault, okay. Guess we gotta wait.
Does our readiness get better? I would think it would get worse during a siege. Oh, by the way, what, what happened with weapons? 16 10 pound parrot rifles are ready. Did we get those Lorenzas? Did they arrive? Or not in Lorenzas, Enfields? 5,000 Enfield Musketoons, 24 10 pound parrots, 32 14 pound Jameses. Yeah, the Enfield rifle muskets are still 31 days away. Thanks, Plowboy. Have a good one. So I can't assault. All I can do is retreat at the moment. I guess we'll keep fighting. Does this readiness ever go up? It looks like it's ticking up. Maybe? Glorious victory at Harper's Ferry. The 4th Corps is fleeing in panic. Nice. Okay, so we didn't end up fighting a major battle there, but the enemy did withdraw. Um, William Butler is wounded. 764 casualties to 250. Are we going to see the same thing? 618 to 8. Okay, so it looks like there are actually two engagements at Harper's. Either way, the Federals are withdrawing. Why are they withdrawing south? Where do they think they're going? Let us withdraw into the heart of the enemy. Strange. Okay. We'll send Longstreet to pursue. What's Longstreet's reputation look like after winning that battle where he was largely the commander? Ah, yes, his fame is unparalleled. Five stars. Legendary. Major general indeed. Beauregard also legendary. Did the troops at Richmond get raised? Almost. I forgot we have another core basically being recruited in, in Richmond. Okay. And then uh, the right wing has reached Nashville. The left wing has also reached Nashville. And the uh, army there, Pemberton's Corps, is also being recruited. So we're working on uh, another 14,000 troops in the west. If we take a look at the strategy, federal morale is at 36. Casualties have exceeded 150,000 for the Federals, 85,000 for the Confederates. Overall, I'd say that's a pretty good result. Now, guys, I do apologize. I have to keep this short tonight. I wanted to fight two battles. We only ended up fighting one. The enemy withdrew before the other. Maybe we'll finish this up next time, but this does have to be kind of a quick stream. Um, I'm hopeful that I'll be feeling a little bit more energetic tomorrow and we might get something in a little bit longer, Do I? but I do appreciate you guys coming out, even for an abbreviated stream. Um, and we'll see how things go tomorrow. Until next time, however, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, as always. And until next time, I'm out. Have a good one, guys.